Welcome to today's homeowner with Danny Lipford. Expert advice on improving your home. From the pages of today's homeowner magazine and professional remodeler, Danny Lipford. Well, I'm glad you joined us this week. This is the type of show that I really like, one that we can show you a completed job. Now, over the last few weeks, we've looked at a very extensive interior renovation that has completely changed the character and the look of this home. Now we'll take you back a couple weeks and take a look at some of the trim work that's taken place, some of the cabinets that have been installed, and a variety of different flooring that's been installed. Also, I'll show you the importance of a good transition like we have here between the old and the new. And as always, a great simple solution segment, our best new product of the week, and around the yard. So stay with us here on today's Homeowner. Many times on interior renovation projects, I'm asked a lot about replacement of interior doors. Now we've replaced some of the original doors that had a smooth holocore type design with one that matches a lot better, a six panel wood door. And we were able to install these doors in the existing casings and jams to save a little money on that aspect of it because it can be very expensive in replacing a lot of the interior doors. Now originally in this master bedroom, there was a large cabinet section here that served as maybe a little small home office. Now this was eliminated to give more room in the master bedroom. And also we're building a study on the other end of the house, which made it not a necessity to have this in the master bedroom. Now last week we focused a lot on the hardwood floors and of course they've all been installed and once we have all of the painting and drywall work completed. They'll be back in to actually sand and seal off the floors. In the meantime, we're keeping this brown paper down here to really protect the floors for all the work that's being done. Also, the trim man's been able to install all of the base molding that matches the other base in the house, and the homeowners decided to add a chair rail molding in this master bedroom. Also, the crown molding adds a great touch to any room, particularly here in the master bedroom. Now, we were fortunate to have a nice fireplace. It was in real good shape. It's a true masonry fireplace. It actually is in pretty good shape here and the marble around it looks nice. We have one piece missing that we've been able to save that we'll replace a little bit later. But the mantle that was original to this fireplace was not a real favorite of the homeowners. They decided to have the cabinet man create a nicer one that really fits the style of the house that they wanted. Before the show's over, I'll show you what that looks like. Now this is a double-sided fireplace with this face looking out into the master bedroom. The other side's over in the living room. Before we started remodeling this room, we had just a large amount of bricks we had to remove. Almost the whole wall had brickwork on it. It really didn't give the type of look to this room that the homeowners wanted. They wanted a more of a formal look. So to achieve that, we took all of the bricks down other than a small section here around the fireplace. You can see where we took our concrete saw and cut this real straight because later cabinets will be installed in this area. Actually, we'll have a base cabinet section and bookcases above it on both sides of the firebox. Now the firebox is in great shape. We were able to save all of the original construction here in the firebox as well as the fireplace chase. Now later we'll be having our brick mason come in and brick up an area here for a raised hearth and then covering it with marble that's being selected by the homeowners. I mentioned earlier about the study that we're building on the other end of the house. You know, I love it when we can use an interior French door in a situation like this, leading from the main part of the house out to the study area. You know, the French door, an interior style, is a little more narrow than an exterior style, so it looks a little better on the interior. Also, the door manufacturers are doing something that saves a lot of time for the homeowner or remodeler by installing a protective film over the glass so that you can paint, just paint or stain as much as you want and it saves a lot of time at the end on the cleanup of that glass. Now you know this area was obtained actually by building just one wall. Originally it was an outside porch area that had a covered roof and we were able to gain this 200 square feet by building just this one wall, adding the doors and the two windows. We're in the process of installing the trim here in the family room and we're using this opportunity around the windows to put a little more insulation. 
Now you can see David's in the process of filling every void we can around the perimeter of those windows. You know, the energy efficiency of any room doesn't stop when the original insulation goes in. As much of this type of thing that you can do will make the room even more energy efficient. Also, there's expandable foam that can be used for the same purpose, but it tends to be a little messy. Now talking about trim, any of the custom pieces of trim that you may use, like we'll be using over this elliptical transom, have to be ordered many weeks in advance normally. Now we're expecting this just any day so that it can be installed and the painters can progress on their work. Get ready to review your fix-it list as Danny and Home Repair Pro Alan Lyle show you this week's simple solution. You know, one of the most common household chores around the house may be painting. Here's some tips to make it a little easier for you. If you buy several gallons of paint, even though it's the same color, believe it or not, the color will vary from gallon to gallon. Now, to keep this from being a problem, take a couple of five-gallon buckets. Pour in two, three, four gallons of paint in one bucket, and then transfer that paint from bucket to bucket. This is called boxing your paint. You'll want to do this several times and then you won't have a problem and of course remember stir it well before using it. Now, any home improvement task is always made easier with the right tools and when you're talking about painting you're talking about paint brushes. Now buy a good quality paint brush and remember to really maintain it real well once you use the paint brush for any task. After you finish clean it real well either with a mineral spirits or water depending on the type of paint that you're using and then use a wire brush to really clean it and to straighten out the hairs on the brush. Then return it back in the original case so that it'll maintain its original shape. Also, it's a good idea maybe to hang it up in your shop instead of just throwing it in your toolbox. Now, here's one tool you won't see any professional painter without. It's called a five-in-one tool. It's very sturdy, can act as both a scraper and a putty knife. It also has some other features. This pointed area here for opening up your paint boxes, also for getting into those tight corners. On this side, this will help you to open up the paint cans. And probably mo the most distinguished characteristic is this half circle cutout, which is perfect for scraping off those paint rollers and getting off the excess paint. Now, when you are using a paint roller, buy a good roller pan to go with it. Buy a good deep one like the professionals use. It'll hold more paint and you make less of a mess when you're actually using it. Also, to keep it even cleaner, put a garbage bag, plastic garbage bag over it and that way, once you use it, you're able to take the plastic bag off and really throw it away. You don't have any cleanup at all in the pan. Use these tips and it'll make your project go much more smoothly. You know, it's important anytime you're building an addition onto a house that you pay particular attention to the finished floor levels. Bob Kieran, our job superintendent, so tell us a little bit about this. Well, Danny, our, our wood floor guys and the uh, marble people did real well here in our transition. They really met well and we got a smooth area going through the foyer here. Now after the marble installers come back and grout all of this in, it really will be good and smooth right here. That's a lot better than having a threshold there that will show where the old meets the new because this used to be where the front doors of the house were and we added on the extension to the foyer. So that's worked great. And Bob, it's been a week since we've been on this job and there's just so much has changed. A lot of progress and particularly all the trim just looks great. Yeah, our trim man has got all his cased openings in with the bullseyes on the top. And yesterday we had the cabinet people in and we were able to get all the crown molding tied into the cabinets. Now this looks great. You know, when we looked at this earlier in the show, there's just this ugly brick wall um, that had been taken out and just a little sheetrock. But um, the cabinet man really did well. But what's taking place up front here? Well, right now we're trying to build a platform to set the granite on. We're going to be putting it, uh, building out of two by fours with a cement board top on it, and then the granite goes above that. Okay, yeah, it'll have to be good and sturdy um, to accept the granite. Now, the cabinet work looks great with the fluted columns on either side of the bookcases, and I love those little wood appliques that are not only on the mantel, but also up on the top part, and uh, the lacquer white finish looks great. It looks really good, and what we're doing is matching the the um, paint for all the, the crown molding and door casings to match the cabinets so they kind of look like they were all together. Okay, now on the other side we looked at um, a different different room which is the master bedroom and the fireplace that was built originally as part of this one. What about the mantle on that side? Um, that one's a little bit different, it's a stained mantle. Alright, let's show them. <laughs> Bob, you know it's kind of nice to see a stain, some stained wood every now and then. We see so much painted wood. 
Yeah, Danny, our cabinet man made this mantle out of birch wood with a, like a, a walnut stain to it, and it gives a real nice contrast to the white marble that we have around the fireplace. And when we looked at this earlier in the show, we had a piece missing here. I guess they were able to reinstall it. Yeah, while our floor man was here, he went ahead and cut it and re-glued it um, to the face here, and right now he just has it propped up to keep it in place. Okay, well this is great, and I know the painter has this covered up to be able to finish all of the painting here, but I, I know there's a lot of other things going on, including a new floor going in the master bathroom. You've got a, another transition to deal with there. Yeah, Danny, originally we had ceramic tile in there, and it was about two inches thick. We've jackhammered that up, and right now we're putting a cement um, subfloor in so we can put our our marble back in there. Okay, and that'll be important that that transition work out real well. Actually, that marble that's being used is just about the same marble that we have here on the fireplace. Yeah, it worked out real well. Our homeowner um, did real good in their selections. Okay, well, I look forward to seeing the finished product here, and when we come back, we'll give you a tour of all of the finished interior renovations. So stay with us right after this best new product. It's time to check out the Home Center for this week's best new product with Danny and today's Homeowner Magazine's Editor-in-Chief, Paul Spring. All homeowners are very concerned about security in their homes. And when you talk about security, you always hear about deadbolt locks being installed on your entry doors. Now, one of the things is to get a good quality deadbolt that has at least a one-inch throw going into your door jamb. Now this lock is a little unique and Paul's going to tell you about some of the features. Well Danny, this is the Titan Night Sight and uh, it has one terrific feature that just comes from plain old problem and a solution to go with it. The problem is if you get to turn the porch light on, you come home, you're fumbling with your key trying to get inside the door. What this lock uh, is, is equipped with is both a light sensor and a motion sensor. You get within five feet of it and that motion sensor turns on a light that literally lights up this area. You put the key right in there, et voila, and you're inside the door. Now when you talk about lighting something up, people may think you have to have an electrical current run into this, but I understand on the back side of this, it actually has a place for just a couple batteries to power it. That's right, Danny. A couple of AA batteries, they'll last for about a year, and it also powers one more very nice convenience. See that red light go on? Mm -hmm. Well, you can be checking that from across the room when you're ready to turn out the lights and, uh, and uh, go to sleep and you know that front door is locked and it's secure. Well, that is convenient. What kind of cost are we looking at here? We're looking at about $50 for uh, a good solid deadbolt with a couple of nice convenience features. Good. Well, it is convenient and it adds a lot of security. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Now I'm taking a look at one of the ceiling medallions that were installed as part of this interior renovation. You know, a medallion like this can really add a good classic look to any room, particularly this dining room. But if you're installing a medallion, you need to attach it well to the ceiling. You may have to nail it, screw it, glue it, or all of the above to really get the right look. Also, have the painter put a small caulking bead around the medallion where it touches the ceiling to really give it a finishing look. Now, we're at the stage in this project where the homeowners have moved in, the interior is complete, and they're in the process of placing their furniture. They haven't gotten to the point of putting their pictures up or their window coverings on yet, but I'm sure that'll be done within the next few weeks. Now, the kitchen that's adjacent to the dining room really had very little work completed in here because it was in great shape before the interior renovation started. Basically, a little paint work and a little protection of everything that was existing is all that took place. We actually covered everything with brown paper and a lightweight plastic to protect it and to keep the dust from inside the cabinets. Now, another thing we protected was the marble floor that was in, in real good shape when we started. And uh, it's kind of a matte finish on it. Looks great. And we decided to use a similar material and continued it on into an adjacent room, which is a laundry area as well as a half bath. So it looks great in the way that that um, consistency in the floor continued right on in. Another part of this renovation included the creation of a very nice study area next to the kitchen. Now this originally was a covered porch, but by adding just one wall with doors and windows and a little bit of floor work gave us over 200 square feet of very usable space. Also, these were the original exterior doors that led out onto that porch, and we made these look more like interior units by doing several things. One, we changed the trim up around on the inside, 
we used an interior style doorknob and more importantly we removed the old deadbolt locks and plugged the holes. This is very easy to do in a painted door like this. A little bit of sanding and painted, they virtually disappeared. Now this is one of the areas of the house, one of the rooms that will probably be used by the family more than any other room. It's the den area, and it being adjacent to the kitchen like it is, will, will I'm sure have a lot of family gatherings in here. And they have their TV on one side, and then they have the fireplace on the other side. Now you may remember in last week's show we talked about the direct vent fireplace. Now, this is a gas unit and it allows us to vent it directly off the rear of the unit which gives us this opportunity for the cabinet man to build us a real nice mantel or shelf up on top of the fireplace that ties in real nicely to the adjustable bookshelves on either side and the little base cabinets. You know, this will be a perfect place for a nice big painting or flower arrangement. It's really a nice focal point for this room. Now, as I said, this is the more informal area of the house. A more formal area is the living room on the front of the house. Now, this will be a perfect room for entertaining as large as it is. Actually, it appears much larger now than it did before the renovation because of the removal of the brick wall as well as some beams up overhead. Really makes it appear a lot larger. Now, there's always one little finishing touch that needs to be done at this stage in any project, and the weak link here is our granite man. He'll need to get back to his shop and cut out a new piece of granite for that. He had a problem on the installation of that. Now the fireplace itself is much larger than normal. You could really put some sizable logs in there when you're entertaining. Now that all the craft paper and the protective covering's been taken off the floor, you can really appreciate the red oak hardwood floor. Now this is full three quarter of an inch thick. It should last indefinitely in this house. Now over my shoulder you can see the entrance to the master bathroom and bedroom suite which really turned out real nice as well. The hardwood floor was continued in there and all the finishing touches have been put in those areas, including the bathroom that received a new floor, some new countertops, and has some great natural light coming in from the skylight overhead. Now the upstairs has also seen a big change. As you walk up the stairs, you may notice that the wall at the top of the stairs has been completely removed. This really opened up this landing and allows you to look down into the foyer. We've also added three inch crown molding throughout all of the rooms and a number of the closets have received additional shelving to make it a little more convenient for the homeowners. All the rooms in the upstairs, including walls, ceilings, doors, and trim have been completely repainted. Something else we discovered that had to be done is an upgrade of the heating and cooling system. We also outfitted this with a modern filtering system. Both bathrooms have received a complete facelift with new cultured marble countertops, new cabinet doors, and new shower enclosures. Now the homeowner plans to install some decorative oval mirrors over all of the vanities. This will really put a finishing touch on these upstairs bathrooms. Now stay with us next is our Around the Yard segment. Now for a bit of news from the great outdoors as Danny takes a look around the yard. If you have flowers in your yards like these zinnias, you can improve their appearance and keep them blooming longer by removing any of the faded flowers. It's called deadheading. Now once the blossoms die, deadheading allows the plant to focus its energy on flower production instead of production of seeds. To deadhead large flowering annuals like zinnias or marigolds, for example, simply pinch off or cut fading flowers back to the next pair of leaves or branch. Now for mat forming plants with small flowers, it's easier to shear them off with garden scissors or pruning shears. Now don't remove more than a third of the plant or you'll risk stunning its growth. Now it's always a good idea after deadheading to use a quick acting water soluble fertilizer. Mix it well and use it at least every seven to 10 days. Now this will really help the plants to produce more blooms and a lot faster. Now this is the point in the job where it's real gratifying to be a remodeler when all the elements of the renovation come together. Now we've been able to accomplish everything the homeowners wanted in this renovation by updating the house and putting a little bit of their personality in this home. In addition to that, we were able to make it more energy efficient by putting a new heating and cooling system in. Now any successful remodeling project is only possible with some good careful planning up front. So take some time to make those key decisions and determine the exact scope of work you have planned for your renovation. 